Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. There are many people who demons have been casted out of them yet their situations did not change see that it's not all about demons there are strongholds that are resident within our minds and tonight god will grant us grace to deal with it how do you pull down these strongholds let's look at it quickly How do you pull down these strongholds? Seeing that they are destructive. Man of God, could it be that there is more God can do with your life and ministry? But your mindset, your mindset. I was teaching the school of ministry and I told them, the ministry students, I told them, I said, think world class. Think world class. You can start from Jerusalem, but don't die in Jerusalem. Jesus, listen, listen. They said this about Jesus. Nathaniel said in John chapter 1. He said, can anything good come out of where? Let me, let me talk to you a bit before we talk about how to pull down strongholds. Let me tell you how familiar spirits operate. You know, have you heard about familiar spirits? Do you know how they operate? Let me tell you. A familiar spirit, right, is is a spirit or there are groups of spirits that have dwelt across a region for a very long time they have studied the vulnerabilities of the people and built strongholds from their vulnerability are you getting what i'm saying they have they have over hundreds and probably thousands of years dwelt in a region that's why they are called familiar they understand everything about the lineage. They understand everything about that territory. And they have been able to study patterns. And they have found the best pattern that they can create a door out of. That's the reason why you find out that many territories have certain limitations. Is that true? There are tribes that their own, their own um, unbecoming is immorality. Is that true? There are tribes that their own is hatred. There are tribes that their own is anger. There are tribes that the men are careless. Is that true? Generally careless. Born again or not born again. The men are just careless. There are tribes and territories where in almost any, every family, you must find one or two daughters that um, may have a child before marriage. Is that true? There are other families that you, out of 10 people, you may find only one that can sustain their marriage. Familiar spirits. They build strongholds across the vulnerabilities of territories and they use it as their entrance. So, the man of God may be in ministry, but he has not dealt with these areas and he thinks it does not matter. And he finds out that although he's in ministry, that anger that surrounded his territory is still affecting him in ministry and there are many doors god will send partner to the ministries he will drive them out because of anger are you seeing that now how do you pull down these strongholds number one you must first recognize and admit the need to take on a renewed godly mindset you will never never receive the help of god if you do not recognize and admit that you need help there are many arrogant people with messed up mindsets who will never accept that something is wrong with their ideologies the first step to your deliverance hear me brothers and sisters is not that hands are laid on you is that you come to a point where you think about your life and look at me in the next one minute i like everybody under the sound of my voice think about your life is this the best if you don't come to a point where you think about your life you may die in that level forever think about your life 
Why am I behaving the way I always behave? Why have I attracted all kinds of woes into my life? Is this the best of my destiny? Why is it that every man that comes into my life in two weeks, he will go away? Leave the issue of demons. They gave you a job. After two weeks, you fought with your superiors. They drove you. You went to another place. After two weeks, you fought with your superiors. The third one, the day they gave you the job, you slapped your boss. They said, this way, out, never come back again. Something is wrong. Some of us, our mindsets have driven all our destiny helpers. All. There are some of us, our mindset about money has kept us poor and will keep us poor forever. God will bless you with 10,000 naira. You carry all of that 10,000 naira. No tithing, no giving. You carry it and go and eat in a restaurant. You call your friends. Let's come and enjoy ourselves. Mindset. Because you think your respect and honor is based on the money you have. And that's what you got probably from culture. Are you getting my point now? So you think that you will be well respected and you go out of your way, make money only to carry it and spend it. Your concept of making money is to have something to spend because the more you spend, the more you are respected. Mindset. So you see a man who is working and earning 250,000 but you will go to the village for Christmas or New Year at the end of the year and blow 3 million naira trying to impress people and come back broke and sell one of his car only to begin the hard work again after 40 years of working he has not been able to do anything and live for his children everybody say mindset there are some of us we have mindsets and we believe through those mindsets that we can never do anything on our own and that's the basis for your doing malpractice. You are born again. You are every, even this exam now. Some of you it has started. Some of you it will start. There is a, a predetermination already. Malpractice, I must do it. It's just that it will not be as great as the last one. At least I'll be here, but I must do it. For some of you, I will look for chokes, but if they bring it, I will refuse. Mindsets. Have you not heard of parents organizing work? Uh, wayek and jam and flogging their children for not receiving the chokes mindsets because they think that no matter what will happen let the child just move forward their ego is at stake and they don't care whether the child is understanding or he's moving legitimately or not when we come into the kingdom one of the primary ministries of the holy spirit is begin to expose us to a point where we realize that the mindsets we have at the moment is not sufficient to take us to the place where God wants to take us. How many of you can admit tonight that I, I want to take responsibility? Some of you, you have been blaming everybody from your father to your mother. You are blaming everybody. You are now blaming your friend. You are now blaming everybody. You will take that bad attitude and blame your husband and your wife. When children come, it will now be children. How many of us tonight can say, I take responsibility. My mindset needs upgrading. There's no denying it. See, let me tell you, when you come before God, you must be like a child. You must allow yourself. It's not your fault. Some of us, that's the reality you lived with all your life. Now God is challenging you. There are two groups of people in this place tonight. Those who will argue it and throw away what I'm saying and allow the devil to keep fortifying that mindset. And after 20, 30, 40 years, you'll find out that nothing has moved. I found out that time does not change things. New decisions bring new changes in life. For 38 years, a man was lying down at a pool called Bethesda. But in less than five minutes, when he did something differently from a renewed mindset, you know his problem, anger and bitterness. Jesus said, what will I do for you? He said, no, every time I want to do this, all these people. And Jesus said, that's not the issue. That's not the issue. You have refused to move forward because you think your friend married the man who will be your husband. Ten years, they've given birth to five children. You are still there angry. 
They cannot even remember the events that happened. Say in this life, there are some people even in heaven. Blah blah blah. Keep talking. They are moving. You are there dying. The devil has crystallized a mindset of hatred. There are some of us that hate our parents. It's true that they treated you bad. But you know that you must honor your parents for your days to be long. And now God is telling you, let go. So that you can take on something new. Me, God forbid. Mindsets. God wants to take us to new levels. Brothers and sisters, there is no telling how far God is going to take you. Look at Joseph. Joseph had a dream. A great dream. To be a great man in life and destiny. He shared the dream with his brothers. And he paid dearly for it. After many years, he now became the prime minister in Egypt. And his brothers came. He would have been angry to hold on to that resentment. The Bible says a merry heart doeth good like medicine. But a broken spirit who can bear. There are some of us right now, God is speaking to you. There is a lot of forgiveness for you to do if you must rise up. You are angry with everybody. Now you, are, you have joined the group. You, you are now angry with yourself. Everybody you are angry with has moved forward. Only you. Now you are angry with yourself for being angry with everybody. I, I don't even like life. Let me even die. You see, that's the point. But tonight you are hearing the word of the Lord. It's time to lay that mindset down. Some of us, you've been carrying your village on your head. And it has been punishing you for decades. It's now time to drop that thing and say it's true. I am from so, so, so place, but I'm an ambassador of the kingdom. I need to change. Many of us have mindsets about money. Mindsets about marriage. Mindsets about God. Mindsets about everything. Some of us, because of our mindsets, you don't apologize. Because your mindset interprets apology as being cheap. So when you need to say, I'm sorry, you say, over my dead body. I'm sorry would have saved many people. Money, time, opportunities have been lost. Say, the way I am, I don't tell anybody I'm sorry. I don't look for anybody's thing. I don't care. And God is saying, apologize. Say, for what? Mindset. Who knows? Maybe there are still some people here. You come for koinonia, but you don't talk to one another. I can't apologize. There are some of us, mindsets have brought self-centeredness. Let everyone go to hell for as long as I'm doing well. It must benefit me first. When I'm satisfied, I now turn and I say, who is there? I had to change a lot of things oh my goodness i had terrible mindsets when i started working with god i had gotten some of these mindsets from my upbringing i got these mindsets from my failures of the past i got these mindsets but i knew that where god was taking me to see you cannot give god your terms for greatness you must subscribe to his terms Many of us want to be great, but you want to be great at your terms. You say, Lord, these are my conditions. If you can bend to my little mold, that's your cup of tea. And God says, I am God. Do you know that something that has never been done in your family, you can be the first? But the question is, are you like the nation of Israel that has limited God? Sister, who told you God cannot use women? Who told you there cannot be women billionaires in your family? Everyone has suffered. You are planning to go and join them. I know one of our ladies in this place. They have a mindset in their family. She comes from a background where if you go to secondary school, just from a little, they just drag you and say, go and marry. You know there are backgrounds like that. They say you have tried. JS3 or SS1, that's good enough. Go and marry. And I know the lady and I've, I've honored her resilience. 
this lady has gone through all kinds of pressure from family that she should go and marry and the lady said i want to go to the university there's much that god wants to do they made arrangement of one man for her and they were trying to cajole her to go home so that he would pin her down they would marry and she refused let me tell you breaking out of a mindset is difficult you will be misunderstood because you are breaking status quo some of you when you want to do something your parents say every end of the year there is something we bow to and you say daddy i love you and i respect everyone but i'm tired i'm now a child of god your father will say how old do you think you are i bow to this thing to pay your school fees why didn't you reject the school fees i bow to this thing to buy the bible that you are using you better go and bow But who tonight will be able to say, Lord, I recognize a need for a change of mindset. Oh, brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. If you break that barrier between you and your destiny, you will fly on the wings of eagles. I don't care how bad things are right now. It doesn't take time. It only takes you cooperating with the Lord. Say, Lord, in my village nobody has done this in my family nobody has done this but right now i make up my mind to partner with the holy spirit you may be one in a million but you must be the first to stand up and arise and say i'm going to break this status quo this status quo of witchcraft everybody in your family has died at 30 you will need to change your mindset and say no way no way My father's elder brother died at a particular age. My father's younger brother died at a particular age. When he was getting to that point, thank God that we had had some spiritual knowledge and we prayed and we labored in the spirit. My father would have died in a miserable way. How to pull down strongholds. Number one, you must recognize and admit that you need a renewed godly mindset. You must. Every man that saw the mercy of God in his life had to come to a place where he broke down and humbled himself. God does not help arrogant people. If there is one thing that God does is to oppose them. There are many of us probably for the first time in your life today will be your the first time your pride will be broken to say lord finally finally i get down on my knees and i accept that my wrong mindset is the reason why i'm poor and broke my wrong mindset may be the reason why i am not married my wrong mindset is the reason why my ministry may not be growing my wrong mindset may be the reason see if you break down let it sting your ego and let it go and let god step into your life you will never i'm telling you this you will never get the attention of god with the arrogant nature that many of us have god if you are available please come down i think uh, i may need you one or two areas god is not like that if my people who are called by my name the first thing that happens is they shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and then turn repent turn from their wicked ways he said then not before not during then will i hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their lives the hand of the lord is not too short over our destinies many of us need to get to that point of humility tonight i know you are a great evangelist bishop pastor but tonight break down your pride and say lord i ask for mercy there is something up here that is permitting the devil to wreck my life i had to come to a point in my life where i said lord don't let me be a fool forever. Search my heart. Try my thoughts. All the mindsets that authorize demonic activities in my life.
take it away. I'm willing to pay whatever price. Who is ready to make that decision tonight? Oh, that's where it starts from. That's where it starts from. That's where it starts from. Nothing will ever change in your life. Nothing will ever change in your destiny. Stop blaming people. Stop blaming your father. Some of us are angry at where we are coming from. I wish I didn't come. Well, you are from there now. So you can as well calm down. You're already hoping that you will soon change your indigent certificate. That's not the issue. Indigent certificate will not change your destiny. When your mindset changes. Some of us have disowned our parents because they represent pictures of such failure you don't want to be associated with. The day you look at your you have been telling everybody that your father is your uncle. It's time to tell the truth. Some of us have lied that our parents are abroad. They are not abroad. It's time to tell the truth. That man is my father. He may not have done well, but I will rise. What he could not eat, I will give him. Where he could not go, All this life of falsehood and lies and a fake impression of success will destroy us. We have to come to a point where we admit that there is something about our mindset. For some of us, it has become strongholds. You betray everybody that comes close to you. It's an attitude. It has never been an issue. You're a loving person. You love God, but you betray. You are not trustworthy at all. Any information they tell you is the same thing as telling a radio station. It's just like they took it to FM and said, let just tell the whole. And you are very happy. You are a pretty lady, but that's your own becoming. Every guy that comes after two weeks, he just does as if he's going to come back and disappears. Because every time they see that thing, the Bible says Naaman was the captain of the army of Syria. Second Kings 5. He said, but we must deal with the bots in our lives tonight. And if you are unwilling to take responsibility, let me guarantee you, you will never see the hand of God. Number one, Lord, I recognize, I admit that the quality of my life today is dependent on my decisions which have been products of my mindset. I may not have seen things accurately, but right now I ask you to help me. Number two. Number two, how to pull down strongholds. After admitting this, number two is casting out the demons that keep the faulty mindset. You must cast out those spirits that keep those mindsets. Because when a mindset has become a stronghold, a demon spirit is involved. You will never enter a man's house and spoil the goods until you bind the strong man. And casting out demons there involves number one, destroying their legal hold over your life. The realm of the spirit is a legal realm. Please listen to me. All these demon spirits and these principalities that leech over our destinies, they do it on legal basis. And the Bible says, and they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. That's where we talk of covenants and curses and yokes that cast spells over people's minds. Control their mindsets. You must cast those demons. You must cast those devils. And if you think there is no spirit to cast out, you are joking. You are joking big time. There are wicked spirits that leech and become strongholds. So every time God wants to step into your life, they build fortifications. They have kept families poor. They have kept many people downcast. 
you must break their legal hold. It's not enough to cast out devils. That which gives them a legitimate ground on your life must be dealt with. And the blood is the mystery that solves that. Because the blood is a price in the spirit. The highest price. The price that can open any door. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. Are we getting blessed tonight? We are getting into the heart of the matter now. Please let me have your attention. Let my life be the temple of your spirit. Let my spirit feel the warmth of your embrace. Let me be a holy habitation where your spirit is pleased to dwell oh lord i want to know your glory i want to offer a sacrifice of praise so fill this temple Lord with your spirit once again the Bible says in whom the God of this world are you seeing that there are spirits involved blinded their minds he did something it's an enchantment over your mind it's a spell that controls your mind no matter what you are told and that's what authorizes demons you sleep in the night and there are all kinds of spirits coming to molest you you go on prayer and fasting and in the middle of the prayer and fasting is still happening there is a legal hold it's not just in Jesus name go I'm telling you listen to me Oh yes. Whenever something good is about coming into your life, a man or a woman or a snake or a serpent or something, these are mysteries in the spirit. Demons don't find pleasure in anything. They is 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 a is a mystery, it's a code in the spirit that activates the operation of failure. Some of you is during exam, certain strange things happen to you enchantments mindsets that have been blinded by demonic activities and you want to rise every time you want to rise all they need to do is touch those codes and it brings you back you want to stop the clubbing you want to stop all of those things the day you make that determination a strange mystery happens in your life and it reduces you back you are in a dirty relationship that is ungodly. You pray and you make a vow and say, I'm going to send a text to this brother and say, enough is enough. I'm ready to move forward. And these mysteries are activated again. And you who said you will stop, you will now call him and carry your two legs and go to his house. It's not normal. But mindset. He said, in whom the God. And to make matters worse, you truly have a stronghold when they are talking to you and you do not even see the need for change. Have you seen people like that? That's the classic example. There are people that can be sitting. You are talking to them and to you it's supposed to be very clear that this rubbish they are doing is not taking them anywhere. And they look at you. When you finish, they just laugh. There are people like that. They will escort you for koinonia and come and leave you here. They'll say to bros, tomorrow now, it will be. And they turn back and you are wondering and powerful worship is going on in whom the God of this world, the God of this system has what? Blinded their minds. It's like a, it's not just blinded like um, it's a spell. That's why some of our parents can be doing the things they are doing. Mindset. God will bless them. 
they will carry the money and be giving the children of rich people and you are dying in your house not even a rapper for your mother they've not paid your school fees and when you talk to them they don't even see the need to change they say i know what i'm doing the god of this world is blinded their minds you must cast out the demons that fortify these mindsets and make them strongholds number three when that happens, then you engage in what the Bible calls the renewal of the mind. The renewal of the mind is useless until there is first an admittance until the spirits that are responsible for holding this mindset are casted out. Then you are now released. Now look up please. This is the problem with many deliverance ministries in Nigeria. Listen to me. You think God is calling you into the deliverance ministry? Just listen to me before you add to this confusion that we have in this country. Many people fulfill the first condition. Yes, I think something is wrong. Something is moving in my body. Huh? Or I have repeated cycle of failure. Now you go to a man of God. Step one. Step two, you believe the demons are casted out. But number three, there is no renewal. And the Bible tells us the mystery of demonic operations. When a spirit leaves a man, huh, it goes through arid regions, dry places, seeking for a place of habitation and not finding any. This is what the demon will tell the man. He said, I will arise and go back to my house. He's still calling the man his house. And then he returns back and the Bible says he finds the place swept, clean, but empty. Swept, clean, but empty. And when the demon sees that is still the old mindset that is there, he now gathers seven other demons greater than itself and says, let's build a fortification. And you find out that the man's latter state is even worse. That's why you can see that a man can be delivered. Two months, he may get some level of breakthrough. And after three or four months, he gets back not even square one, square zero. And then we keep blaming a lot of men of God and saying, that's, that means that my man, my man is not genuine. That deliverance is not true. We have a responsibility. The renewing of your mind. What does it mean to renew your mind? It means to passionately pursue to know God's perspective about life. To renew your mind means to seek to understand the principles of the kingdom as revealed by the word of God. I take it again. The renewal of the mind means to passionately seek to know God's perspective about life. That's what I call wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to know God's perspective about everything. And then to seek to understand the principles of the kingdom as revealed in the word of God. Romans chapter 2 verse 2. It says, Be not conformed to this world. The Greek word is aeon. The thinking pattern the mindset that comes with this system. There is an ideology that comes with this system. He said, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. You're not there yet? By the renewing of your mind. He said that ye may prove that which is um, good and acceptable and perfect will of God and be not conformed to this world but be transformed so how do you get transformed by the renewing of your mind that means there are things I've been doing that is probably keeping me poor I've not been tithing I've not been giving I walk in a life of selfishness and materialism and self-centeredness all of a sudden those spirits and demons of poverty have leached through that mindset and created a stronghold out of it. Now I come and I make up my mind to want to enjoy the blessings of the Lord. 
And when I'm delivered from the oppression of those demons, then I now begin to adopt heaven's ideology. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Luke 6, 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give unto your bosom? And so on and so forth. And then, the moment there is that renewal, Satan comes and he cannot find his doorway to your life again. At that point, your liberty becomes permanent. Deliverance is never complete until it is backed up by a process of transformation. That's why people, people who get delivered and are not channeled to sit under a heavy teaching anointing where the principles of the kingdom are taught will go back, I guarantee you, back into what they were delivered from. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 it says let this mind be in you let this mindset permit this mindset to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus when Jesus walked the earth he had a mindset there was a mindset that made the waves and the, and the seas obey him there was a mindset that made the Holy Spirit comfortable living in him there was a mindset that made his enemies not to be able to resist nor can say his words. There was a mindset that helped, that made him to fulfill his assignment. And the Bible says, let this mind permit it to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And the instrument to get that, that mindset into you is the word of God. The word of God accurately taught and accurately explained. Number four, how to pull down strongholds. Number four, you need to take steps and make new decisions that are consistent with this renewed godly mindset. You need to now take steps and start making new decisions that are consistent with this renewed godly mindset. Your life became a disaster because you were taking steps based on a mindset that was ungodly. Now that you have paid the price to adopt a new mindset, start taking steps based on that new mindset. And you find out that your life will start changing. Philippians chapter 4 from verse 8. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are pure, hallelujah, it begins to list certain things and it tells you, think on these things. Let your mindset, say, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Allow these things to frame your mindset so that your decision will now become true, honest, just, pure decisions. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 2. We looked at that, but let's look at it again. Shibala kupratishika. I announce to somebody tonight that the devil is a liar over your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 2 verse 2. Please read together. I want to read. The apostle is speaking. He said, fulfill my joy that ye be like-minded. There is a mindset that I propose to you. This is my admonishment. Please be like-minded. Don't have a different mindset. There is a, a mindset that made the Holy Spirit work mightily in me. He said, be like-minded. Be like-minded. Having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Brothers and sisters, 
your destiny is at the mercy of your mindset your destiny is at the mercy of your mindset the quality of your home is at the mercy of your mindset the excellency of your spiritual life is at the mercy of your mindset The quality of your finance or your level of finance is at the mercy of your mindset. Your level of greatness in life, among other factors, is at the mercy of your mindset. He leads me and guides me to the city of a he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. Listen, God wants to take you far. But are you ready to hold on to his hands tonight and say, Lord, if it means me dropping certain devilish aspects of culture, it drops tonight. If it means me dropping certain aspects of my past, it will drop tonight. Listen, let me tell you something about your past. If your past does not inspire you, dump it. Dump it. Dump it. There is no reason to meditate and think about a past. I don't care what you have done. If your past does not inspire you, pack it up this night and throw it out of your life. Oh, holy God, I know you will not fail. God is concerned, you can count on him. God is dependable. God is reliable. His part of the equation is guaranteed. But the question is, are you ready to hold on to his hand? There are many of you that need to leave the hands of culture tonight. There are many of us that need to leave the hands of family backgrounds and association. Listen to me. Love is a command. Association is not. If you need to pack up from some devilish associations that will not take you to the place of destiny, I don't care how long they have been your friends, separate from them. Abraham had to leave the servants because he was going to climb a mountain. Do you realize that there is a place in destiny? God is dependable. God is reliable. Are you not tired of that habit? You have prayed and prayed and prayed. It's not just the issue of prayer. It's the issue of alignment. Alignment. Your anger has destroyed too many opportunities in your life. It's time to think about it. Your self-centeredness has destroyed too many open doors. Your hatred and resentment is a strong your affinity for immorality has wrecked more havoc in your life than you can imagine. But tonight, before we talk about demons, are you prepared? My job tonight is to bring you to a point where you see the need to embrace a new ideology. A little boy born in the States called Gray Farah is now a motivational speaker, multi-millionaire at a very young age was born by an African American could not amount to anything the family was poor the gentleman was poor 
but he made a decision to break status quo. And he started painting stones. Very tender age. He started painting stones and giving people to cover, to put on their books. And people were laughing at him. He went from door to door because he knew that he had a prophetic destiny to bring his family out of the financial misery. Hallelujah. Eventually, at age 12, that young boy became a multi-millionaire. At age 14, he was sitting on the board of over 10 companies. At age 20, he was given two honorary PhDs. He's 29 right now and is one of the most influential black millionaires in America. Men who decided to cooperate with destiny. Listen, no matter what is happening in your life, you are not the first to go through it. You can't sit down and keep regretting. Forget about what has happened. The Bible says, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, I press. Some of us have meditated too much about yesterday. God gave you the gift of today and tomorrow to remedy the mistakes of yesterday. Every time you wake up to a new day, is God's gift to you that there is still hope for your life. We used to sing a song. Whenever I see another breaking of day, I say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Whenever I see another breaking of day, I say thank you. The relationship failed since last year but till now you have not moved forward you've used one year to regret whereas you would have gotten married you would have even been pregnant now one year to regret and the person that messed up your life has settled down he's even born again now maybe he's a pastor and you are there dying listen Two wrongs don't make a right. It doesn't matter what has happened. Retrace your steps now. Some of you played around with certain opportunities that God gave you. Accept tonight that it was because there was a mindset. Allow the Lord to adjust it and be ready to move forward. The Lord is going to be doing great things next week. But it's not enough. There are many of us. We've been coming for miracle service after miracle service. But every time the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon your life, there is a stronghold that frustrates his activity in your life. So it looks like your situation is so difficult, God cannot break through. It's not true. We have three prayer points tonight. The first prayer point is is a cry before god truly i trust that god will grant us grace to admit tonight and take responsibility for the way our lives have been for those of us who are experts at blaming people forget about it take responsibility it's like saying you are better today than you were yesterday he leads me and guides me to the city of papa he leads me and guides Come on, join us if you can sing. To the place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place Hallelujah. of destiny. This song is a prophetic song. Listen, as you raise this song, I like you to wave goodbye to the past. We are going to start by dealing with the past. I don't care what went right or wrong. 2013, 2000 and whatever is gone. As you raise this song, I like you to announce to your destiny that you are still coming. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. Hallelujah. We are going to sing this song and I like you to sing it from the depths of your heart. That he's leading you. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads Go ahead. Me and Goodbye to the faith. 
failures of yesterday. Goodbye to the failures of yesterday. This one thing I do, forgetting the past, forgetting the past, forgetting the past, forgetting the past. I said to us, I press towards the past. Forget about the past. Sing it as a prophecy over your life. He leads me, he leads me, and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me. Just the voices. Sing it as a prophecy. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. To my place of destiny, He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. Listen, there was a man in the Bible called Saul of Tarsus. The Bible tells us that that guy had a mindset based on his ideology he thought killing believers was a way to please god but on his way to damascus he encountered a light when he encountered the light something happened to him he did not sit down regretting and crying he turned and he knew that he had a great destiny when stephen was being martyred paul saul then was seated and they placed their garments close to him there was an idol worshiper called Abraham. Hallelujah. And he belonged to a land called Or of the Chaldeans. He was an idol worshiper. His father had taught him idol worship. Listen, listen to me. Do you realize that Abraham was not supposed to be the father of faith? That prophetic destiny belonged to his father. Read your Bible. His father failed. And he refused to align himself and god called abraham in genesis chapter 12 the first person god called was his father and then god called him and said abraham he said come out that's our first prayer point come out of your father's house come out of every failure come out of every regret you will never be able to open up yourself for new things when you're still sitting to regret the past now I'd like you to lift your voice and I'd like you to prophesy and say the past is gone. The past is gone. The past is gone. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead, pray. This one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, forgetting the things that are behind, forgetting the failures that are behind. Please pray. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. look up the bible says if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves the next prayer point 
it's a prayer point of sincere humility and brokenness to say lord i take responsibility something about my mindset authorized the devil into my life and i take responsibility and i ask for mercy tonight lift your voice and pray cry out for mercy there's nothing to be embarrassed about it go ahead and pray please pray inside and outside this is for your destiny Pray. Pray. I ask for mercy. I ask for mercy. Lord, I ask for mercy. There is a mindset my family has that has authorized witchcraft that has authorized limitations there is a mindset i have that has made me a recurrent failure tonight i take responsibility Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I live to praise your name. And I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. I live, I live to praise your name. You can't keep being afraid of your destiny. There is a certainty. There is an assurance. I live, I live, I live. I live to your name. Though your beginning be small, but your latter end shall be great. Prophesy. going to pray listen hold on the next prayer point is going to be very strategic because some of you will be delivered here right now hallelujah you're going to command every devil and every spirit that has had access to leech onto your mindset and authorize hell you are going to pray and say in the name of Jesus and by the blood of Jesus I command your hold over my mind to be lifted lift up your voice and pray come on pray koinonia strongholds we command spirits we command forces Demon spirits, demon spirits that are being responsible, demon spirits that are being responsible for God pattern, demon spirits that are being responsible for God pattern. Come under the Bacos, 
He must let you go tonight. Come on, pray. I no longer need you in my life. Spirit responsible for crystallizing mindset and God pattern. They made my family poor. They made failures out of my family. No way. I arise to change. I arise to change things. Lift up your hands as I challenge those devils of darkness. They must let you go. There are spirits that have held on. I tell you, I see a lot of it as I stand on stage here. But they must go right now. The time is up. It's a new season. In the name of the Lord Jesus, whose I am and whom I serve, I decree and I declare that anyone under the sound of my voice who has been a victim of demonic forces, spells, yokes that have crystallized thought patterns that authorize Satan in your life in the name of Jesus and at the count of three let the fire man take it up let the fire of the Holy Ghost visit such a one and that those spirits must go I invoke it in the realm of the spirit right now at the count of three I like you to shout that name that is above all names listen listen I'm already seeing in the spirit there will be dramatic deliverances right now dramatic some of you you will feel fire from your hands and your head fire literally literally it must give way right now are you ready now at the count of three i invoke the powers of the heavens and i decree and i declare that every spirit that is responsible for wrong thought patterns at the count of three may it live your life now are you ready one two three I command those devils out, out, out. I command foul spirits. Inside and outside, I release the fire of the Holy Ghost. I release the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let no spirit stand this fire. Let no devil stand this fire. Let no enchantment. I provoke that in the name of Jesus, every enchantment, every mystery that is responsible for casting spells and invocations over your mind to trap you. In the name of Jesus, let the fire of God land upon your destiny. Hallelujah. Lift your hands one more time. There is no hiding. I like you to lay your hands on your head. That's the instruction the Lord gives me. I tell you something will happen to some of you right now that will surprise you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let those hands on your head become hands of fire. And I declare that every power, every power, that is resting upon your mind and destiny as you shout that name Jesus let that fire bring freedom to you right now are you ready one two three oh break it I break courses I break courses I break courses I break jinxes, 
I command spells. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Every altar, I don't care where it is, whether in your village, wherever that is servicing any enchantment, any altar, Makoto Parade. That has taken any sacrifice that puts you in bondage right now at the count of three. I command those altars to burn into pieces and that you be released. One, two, three, be free now. I command those altars, they burn with fire. They burn with fire. Shekatatatatata. Oh, you must be free tonight. You must be free. It's time to rise to a new season. Hallelujah. Strongholds that keep mighty men to remain weak in life. Strongholds you would have gone to school for years, but it made sure you never pass jam. It works for everybody until it comes to your turn. Then you make a foolish decision. You don't even know why you said what you said. And it closes the door to you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We are going to sing this song. I see a river flowing in the spirit. This is what I see in the spirit. Fresh water. And I believe that this is bringing freshness to many people. Thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. Give it your best. As we sing that song, prophesy it as your song of Exodus. Out of certain nonsense. He said, My head shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn. He said, And I shall be anointed. Let me tell you something. If you are not tired of failure in your life, you can go. But for as many who are saying, Lord, this is it. I am sick and tired. This year must not finish with my life like this. I'd like you to sing this song from the depths of your heart. Thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. Your prophecy tonight is that you, O oh Lord, but thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for, for me. You're my glory. you to rise. I'm a 
Hallelujah. Now, hold on. The Lord is showing me something. I'm seeing a mask. A mask like the face of, of an idol or something. And there is a particular family I'm seeing that worships that thing. Is 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 currently in your house. I don't know if he's in the village or somewhere, but I'm seeing a mask. A mask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whichever family this word is for, Madoka Pata, Zekete Kabakatava Lada Bokotobai. I command that power to lose its hold over your life now. I command that power to lose his hold over your life now. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to minister to a lady. We still have miracle service, but um, men die in your family. In fact, right now, there are only about one or two that are left from what the Lord is showing me. Men, whether they get married or whatever, they just die mysteriously. Please, who is that? I'm just led to pray for the person. My glory lift her up on my head. My glory. Hold your hands, both of you. Okay, you're part of it. Come, hold your hands. Please make sure you understand the word. Don't just be emotional about it. I see mysterious death. Men, not women. Men, men, men. Hallelujah. Look at me. The Bible says for this purpose was the son of God made manifest that he may destroy that he may annihilate the works of darkness for this purpose I'm going to pray for you you are representing your families but the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you and that curse must be broken it must be broken for many of you they are covenants ordinances of darkness it's time for your destiny to go lift those hands Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your fire. Let fire fall. Not just upon them. But upon the foundations of those families. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As I lay my hands upon you. I command that those things are broken. Broken, 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 broken in the name of Jesus, 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 broken the cause out, out of her. I command, I see a spirit, I see a man wearing a red skirt. I'm seeing a man wearing a red skirt. In the name of Jesus, release her destiny now. Now, 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 now. Broken, broken, broken. I cause altars. There is a cause in this family. There is a cause in our family. I set fire upon those altars of darkness. I release everyone. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Those altars in Cameroon. I command fire. Upon those altars of witchcraft. That ties your success and your progress. Oh, let her come. Have I prayed for her? I pray for you. Hallelujah. I prophesy to you that this evil ends. This plague of death ends in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It ends. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. You are soon rounding up. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. Go back to your seat. I would have done this next week. But the Lord is ministering to me. I'm seeing a number of people. I see plots of darkness over your exams. Some of you, it has started happening to you. And there are things we must settle right now for you to write a meaningful exam. Some of you are getting into my practice because of this pressure. Lift your hands. You study and you don't understand. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to start speaking. Not everybody, but there are specific people that the hand of God will locate them. I see academic chains. Chains. You are not dull. 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 Lift your hands. Father, in the name I see fire bursting. Bursting across the congregation. Everyone under any academic spell, help them please. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, at the count of three, as you shout that name, Jesus, you will feel fire. It will be on your hands. Hands, 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 hands. One, two, three. Release them. Release them now. Release them now. Release the academics now. Release the academics now. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. My sister. You on black, two of you. Come, the one on white and the one on black, two of you. Come, your time of visitation has come. Come, are you friends or sisters or something? You are sisters. Because I saw the same thing happening to you, happening to her. There is witchcraft in your family. And if that thing is not broken, who is married among you? You are married. Where's your husband, madam? He's at home. I need to pray for you. Hi, this, this is evil. Ah! If I don't pray for you, well, it's not it's a personal thing, but I need to pray for you so that you will not start having problems in your home. Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? I must pray for you. Number two, God wants to bring prosperity to your family. Huh? Look at me. This is the biggest desire of you and your husband. Is that true? As you are standing like this, you are, you are suffering. Things are not even working well because there is witchcraft. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. My sister, look at me. There are four major things that are going to happen to your life between now and December. After I pray for you, I'm not going to say them now. But God will surprise you, He's going to shock you. Because you are a nice person. But you see, what is stopping your progress in life is witchcraft. I don't know if before now you believe that witchcraft exists or not. But if you don't, please believe it. Because you will see what will happen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I curse the power of witchcraft. I stretch my hands over you and I command it to leave you now. I see something like a crown on your head. And I command that spirit to leave you. It goes never to return to you. And Father, these four things you have revealed may they happen. And let her see it. Madam... Look at me. Go and tell your husband. November 17th. November 17th is a day of mighty breakthrough for the family. 
mighty great thing for the family. God bless you. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Hallelujah. Please just give me one or two minutes and then we'll round up. But let me just minister to one person. I'm seeing someone from your 200 level. They have never brought out your complete results till now. Please, who is that person? Either one will be missing or something. This is the sign the Lord is giving me. You, come. You are not the only one. I'm seeing a lady too. Please, don't just come out and be emotional about it. Who are you? You're wearing blue or something like that. Come, come and stand. Hold your hands. Ken, there is witchcraft in your family. And because of the greatness, the greatness that is upon you, you are going to become such a mighty man and a great man. But I see this thing haunting you, haunting you in a very serious way. I see that there is, there is a mantle of wealth and greatness upon your life. But then I've seen this thing happen because I'm seeing that this thing wants to frustrate your academics. Your scripts mysteriously missing. Who is he that speaks a thing and it will come to pass when the Lord has not declared it? I put the word of God upon your life and I declare right now every missing script I don't care where it is I command that the angels of God may they go to the senate may they go to your faculty and bring out your script right now as i speak to you i release their ministry right now i release their ministry right now i pray for two of you look at me the two ladies look at me look at me i'm going to pray for you there's delay serious delay in your family very very serious delay and I'm going to pray all of you have great destinies and the Lord wants to lift you father I pray and I curse witchcraft in the name of Jesus that everything that represents witchcraft I curse it let your scripts be released let your scripts be released right now name of the Lord Jesus. I declare it. I decree it. Let it be established in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and give Jesus thanks. Hallelujah. the Lord wants me to pray over that family. Is there anyone like that? Please quickly come. Your name? Your son name? Your son name too? Do you have an elder sister? Where is she? What's she doing? She's preparing to get married. I see serious trouble coming if we do not pray. Are you getting my point? I'm going to pray. There's serious trouble if we do not pray. I need to pray for your family because it's not like there was witchcraft in your family. There is still witchcraft. And the leaders in your family are the ones engaging in this directly. And this is affecting you people. It's bringing delay. One. Two. Three. 
too is bringing lack of sustained spiritual growth in your life and for your sister I see this thing affecting her even in the area of her marital life we have to destroy it right now father I cause because I'm seeing an animal I'm seeing an animal that was given for sacrifice I'm seeing an animal and it was done for this lady in the name of Jesus I curse that thing right now I command it to leave you Mando Pratisha. that's why you feel in the night when you sleep like something is choking you and I need to pray for you you're very intelligent but things are tied down in your life two of you hold your hands and lift it let me just Lord Jesus in the name of Jesus witchcraft right now every sacrifice that has been done I declare it null and void null and void I release both of you right now everything that is tied your health your health your health your health your health the Lord is releasing your health right now your health I release your health. Sister, let's pray. Now I know that they've already gone far in the wedding. And their information I will not say here. But please pray for the man your sister is going to marry. Do you know him? Do you like him? You don't like him? I won't say more than that. Just pray. Are you getting my point? Because in serious trouble trouble of of slap and beat and kick I'm not a prophet of doom are you hearing what I'm saying don't let your sister not think that I'm prophesying I know that they've already gone find the marriage may God give you more understanding but I'm just telling you what me have seen there is big disaster not everything that glitters is gold but you have been knowing this in your spirit. Is you, have, you have known that something is wrong somewhere. We pray for the mercy of God. And I'm praying for you too. The Lord is releasing favor upon your life. Right now. Favor. 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 Hallelujah. We're out of time. Please rise up on your feet. We'll continue next week during our miracle service. Next week is our miracle service for the month of October. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please invite your families. Don't come alone. Our venue is at CGC. It's going to be a mighty, mighty time. I'm glad to announce to you my mother is going to be around live and direct. Hallelujah. My mother is coming for the miracle service. She will have the opportunity to speak over the lives of so many people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are going to take the altar call now. No closing your eyes. Open your eyes. There are people in this place right now. Some of you inside, some of you outside. You have never truly made a decision for Jesus Christ. You love the things of God. You love church but you've never really come to acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus. And then there are others you have seemingly given your heart to the Lord, but you have found yourself derailing. I want to reconnect you and lead you back to the lover of your soul and to the savior of your life. I'm just going to count one to five. The whole idea of breaking free and subduing strongholds starts when your passion for God is reignited and you're here you need that reconnection please I'm going to count one to five wherever you are inside or outside I'd like you to boldly come out here I'd like to pray with you father thank you one please appreciate them two there are people here who need to come out don't sit back don't wait for anyone you are the first person to come out God bless you God bless you
God bless you. Three, there's nothing to be ashamed about. You don't get shy when you're given an award or a prize or a gift. Four, you say, man of God, it's over with the devil. I'm making up my mind right now that I'm for Jesus, for Jesus ever. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming out. I appreciate your sincerity. God bless you. Keep coming. I'd like to lead you in this prayer that will change your life dramatically. Lift up your right hand and say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me. I acknowledge that I cannot help myself. I ask for your mercy. I ask for your grace. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I believe that Jesus died for me and I accept your Lordship over my life. From today, I declare that I have eternal life in my spirit. Satan is far from my life in the name of Jesus Christ. From today, I go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus. Keep the hands lifted, Father. Thank you for accepting this once. I pray that you make mighty men and women out of them. Make kingdom ambassadors out of their lives. In the name of Jesus. May you be great. May you be mighty. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. And may he use you mightily. No going back. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for making this bold decision. I'd like you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. Just take this way and then they'll have your details and you'll be back. God bless you. Please remain standing. This is your first time of worshiping with us here at Koinonia. I'd like you to gloriously leave your seat and come out here. We have a blessing for you inside and outside. Please very quickly, we're out of time. Leave your seat and boldly come out. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Sars. Thank you, Ma. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, Koinonia, this is not your best. Appreciate them. Make them feel loved and welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming. The Lord brought you here to bless you. He brought you here to transform your life. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you so much for making our time to worship with us. Hallelujah. This is Koinonia. A meeting put together by Eternity Network International. Hallelujah. I guarantee you that your life will never be the same. Something will happen in your life that will transform you completely. Hallelujah. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.